<laughs> These still are the sexiest jerseys I've ever seen. What's good, people? And today I'll be going over with you 10 shooting tips you must know in NBA 2K22 on current and next-gen consoles. So, all right, let's get it. First off, the very basic skill you need to be a successful shooter is avoiding taking heavily contested shots on purpose, man, in whatever mode you play. Having the necessary badges is nice, but you want to shoot a good diet of nine heavily contested shots to give yourself a high chance of actually making them. As this year, you're punished more than in previous years for shooting low percentage shots, so you won't green as often, so you have to be mindful where defenders are much more in relation to yourself before you shoot. And even setting them up, making them think you're gonna shoot so they jump out of the way to give yourself a better shot is more important than ever. Somebody boxing up all your dribble moves and you're stuck, pass the ball to get a better shot elsewhere instead of forcing up something because you're mad. But the biggest hurdle to taking smart shots is slowing the game down. Take your time. Once you get the ball, things probably seem like they're going 100 miles an hour, so you will find yourself forcing every shot under the moon if you're nervous, and you end up yelling at yourself that you actually shot that. Intentionally try and slow down and see what happens. In catch and shoot situations, man, when I first started out, I had no peripheral vision. If nobody was directly in front of me, I was shooting that ball if my dudes passed it to me. And I would get blocked sitting there with a shocked Pikachu face because I wasn't checking my mirrors. Then I learned how important it was to take note of what your defender or the nearest defender is doing in relation to the guy you're passing to. Because sometimes it may look like you're open and you go for a shot and get blocked. That's not fun. So while the ball is in flight, check the nearest defender to the ball and you will notice when defenders are a lot closer than you thought and either require you to not hesitate and launch before that split second window for a good shot is gone or it's time to try and take advantage of that closeout. So you can use these type of situations to your advantage by knowing when your shot isn't there and anticipating what the defender is probably going to do by formulating what your next move is before your player even receives the ball, instead of having your mind made up that you were going to shoot because you were slightly open before you got the ball. Another way to raise your shooting percentage is being comfortable enough shooting the mid-range shots instead of going for the highlight reel dunk every time you cross the three-point line. There's a time and a place for that. The NBA is all about threes and layups, dunks, but some guys will, as a result, end up shooting a lot more heavily contested shots and struggle dunking tips over two people instead of taking the midi. A lot of the time the mid-range shot is there for the taking and if you have gotten comfortable enough with the player's shot, it can be almost as automatic for you as a shot at the rim. If your opponent knows you're not afraid to shoot the mid-range, it can open up easier shots for you at the rim as they move from under it as they try and punch your shot into the backcourt. Now if you use your shot meter, and shout out to a commenter in one of my last videos for this one. But if you want to keep your shot meter on, a simple thing to remember is the shot meter's location will always be located away from where the action is. So if you're anywhere on the left side of the court, the meter will always start on your left. And if you're on the right, it will always start behind you on the right. Every millisecond counts, and this is important to know if you are unaware. Thank you, commenter, for this great tip. The step back is a move that you're going to want in your arsenal to open yourself up for easy looks and you activate it by flicking the right stick straight down and holding turbo allows you to take a bigger step back opposed to just holding the right stick. You wanna use this to quickly create space when driving or against aggressive defenders who are in your face because when you do it, your opponent's excellent in your face D can all of a sudden break down after you perform a step back because of all the newfound space you have to work with to attack off immediately. Now, whether your team shot meter is on or off, going into your options in the pause menu and then to settings, you can adjust your shot feedback to have the game tell you your timing and how covered you were. Off is self-explanatory. You get no information about the shot you just put up. User only will only tell you info about the shots you yourself put up. Free throws only gives you info on only your free throws and all shots will tell you about you and your opponent's shots. So you'll know immediately if your opponent just put up a 60% covered which is what I highly recommend. It's further confirmation whether you and your opponent are putting up good or bad shots. The pick and roll will always be effective because it's the easiest way to get your players open for a shot. And sometimes just the threat of a pick is enough to open you up and you didn't even move. So try to find yourself if you're the lead ball handler or in five versus five modes in as many pick and roll situations as you can to create a roadblock for defenders and open shots for yourself. 
Another tip you must know is while breaking down a defender or trying to execute a fast break three, it's hard sometimes to settle down for a split second to set your feet for a standstill shot. And instead you will attempt some off balance leaner. And if you weren't prepared for that, it could be pretty ugly. So you must know how to have your player come to a quick stop. There's a few methods for it, but to keep things simple, one way is while moving with your player, while holding turbo, tap the left trigger and let go of the left stick. And if done right, your player will be put into a position to quickly rise up and shoot. Eliminating the chance of you shooting some off balance shot that caught you off guard. Now with the removal of shot stick aiming, which majority of people didn't like anyway, if you want to have the highest chance of hitting your shots, you again have to turn your shot meter off. What you do by going into your options, then control the settings and down the shot meter and completely turn it off or set it to free throws only to have the meter off when you shoot jumpers and on for free throws. Outside of last year, recently turning off your shot meter is always giving you the biggest boost to your shooting percentage. And if you're used to staring at the shot meter, this definitely will be tough at first. But trust the more you shoot with specific players or with a specific jump shot, you start to condition yourself to know when the appropriate time is to let go anyway. You sort of feel it, you know? So you don't really need the meter. I usually play the first weeks with meter, then turn it off, and my shooting percentage always rises. And this gives you one less thing to look at and removes the times where after you like hit a nice dribble move and you want to shoot, the meter can kind of sneak up on you and you get a late for no reason. Now without a shot meter, you can still have a perfect release animation, which comes as a flame, a ball, or nothing at all when you green a shot. And lastly, if you mostly play play now online, offline, my league, my team, basically any mode where you're in charge of all five players, Get yourself in practice mode ASAP and sit there and shoot with every single one of them until you can confidently hit five or even 10 straight perfects with that player. Get a new card, hit practice mode immediately and master the timing of the jump shot until you're comfortable shooting with them. So when the time comes in game, you have the most confidence ever and it's automatic for you when to release the shot because you sat there learning random player's shots so he doesn't embarrass you out there. I even flipped the camera around to help with my mastering of Donovan Mitchell shots and it helps, so whatever works. And the same for your mob player, get in practice mode and work on the timing of your jumper until you feel confident you have a better than 50% chance of greening. Although with this, you also wanna make sure your shot is as fast as possible to be able to take advantage of the quick windows you have to shoot. Now with this, you wanna move around the three point line off the dribble type so no situation surprises you and you're going off what you practice. It's all about being comfortable and when you're comfortable with something, you're more confident in doing it. Sorry sports gamers, hope this video was able to help you out. And if so, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't so you don't miss anything we put out. And tell me, what's the shooting tip that wasn't mentioned that you can give the fellow 2K gamers? Leave it in the comments down below. And stay tuned here at Sports Gamers Online for more NBA 2K content. And make sure to hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris from Sports Gamers Online. Thank you all for watching, and be good, y'all.